Hello everybody, my name is Patrick Kanzler. I'm a medical doctor and neuroscientist from MIT and today I'm going to explain to you some of the reasons why the iPhone and iPad designs have been so successful. Now design has traditionally been about materials, about ease of use, about people wanting a product because of the way it looks, feels and the way it handles. Now what Apple has done is they have taken this onto a whole new level. Like in relationships, when we like someone or something, we don't just want to like them, we also want them to like us. Now how can we, can we get an inanimate object, like an iPhone, how can we get, get the feeling that this actually likes us? So that's what I'm going to talk about from a point of view of neuroscience, evolution and human development. Now let's start with the first movements we make when we are children. We use our finger, we point, we're toddlers, we're even smaller than that, we're babies, and we go like, eh! And this means, I want that, give me that. And what do the parents do? Of course, we give it to the children because we like to interact, we love them, and a meaningful relationship is developed to some degree from the small movement with our finger, eh! When we're half a year or a year or one and a half years old. The next thing we do with this thing here is we say, me, or depending on where you're from, me. We continue pointing at things, then we grow a little older and we say, hey, I had an idea, this is smart. So what this finger, using it like this, means from a point of human development is, I have power, I can get something, I define myself, and I am smart, I am thinking. If you look at the famous painting on the ceiling in Rome, you see that this finger also is very significant for connection of humans. It's one of our most sensitive fingers, one of the most sensitive ways we can actually touch something. Now, what did Apple do? They said, okay, I'm going to press one button. I instinctively use this finger and look how I unlock my iPhone. I unlock it like this. I swipe the finger. And now what's happening is with the things we learn as very little children, they get stored deeply, deeply inside our limbic system. Our limbic system is the part of the brain that deals with emotions, where our instincts come from, whether we feel happy or bad, how we make most of our decisions, and it's much, much older than the smart part of our brain, which actually helps us think. So when we're small children and we make a movement and this movement means we're being loved, we're getting a response from the world, we're relating to the world. This gets stored in our limbic system, and even as adults, every time we do this, a part of our brain says we're being loved, we're having power over something, we're relating to something through our limbic system, and this sends a very positive message. So it isn't only intuitive and easy to do, no. It also means this thing here likes me. It helps me conquer the world. Now let's go further. We can take this further. When you look at the scrolling movement, here we have calls. And I can scroll up and down. And it bounces. When you look at little kids, again, age six months to maybe 18 months, they have these toys where they like to go like this, boom, 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 and the thing turns around. And they love that. So it gets stored in our brain at that age. This movement is fun and having an effect on the world. The world loves me. So the same thing happens every time you scroll. So Apple was actually the first company to use this instinctive way of dealing with objects with the world that is programmed deeply inside us during our development. And like this, they manage to get the impression that the product actually likes us. It's an unconscious message. This likes me. The other side effect they get, which is of course much bigger, is that it's really easy to use. I gave my 92-year-old grandmother the iPhone as a granny call yourself. She had to learn that she cannot really destroy it, that she cannot break it, and she just called herself. Easy, swipe, swipe, swipe. And that's not because Apple went from, let's take something complicated and make it simple. No, they simply looked at it 
from the neuro neuroscientific and de developmental point of view and said, look, how is that rooted in the human psyche? Are there any things that are even older than humans? There are lots of things active in our brain that are older than humans. For example, that if I move my right hand forward, my left leg also wants to go out forward. That's as old as the dinosaurs, because the dinosaurs didn't have much of a brain in their heads. So what they did, they had all the coding in their spine, and that spinal coding today still exists. And that's how nowadays, we can with this knowledge, we can develop products really, really based on how the human works. But not only mechanically, saying this is easier to grip than that. Not only logically, one plus one equals two. No, nowadays we can design products around the limbic system, the seat of affection, love, emotion, intuitive understanding. Mm, I have a funny feeling here. Oh, wow, this must be great. The most powerful part of our brain. And this is one of the reasons why Apple products are easy to use for almost anyone, and they simply work. And why we start really, really liking them. Now, I don't know if Apple knew about those things when they developed that, if they're just very, very clever, but you see that if you look into science, and if you look into medicine and how the brain works, you can start developing clever technology like this on your own. That's my bit for today. May he rest in peace. He's a great innovator and a great idol to me. And I hope that his innovations and the innovations of his company will keep influencing the world in a positive way. Thank you for listening. For watching.